welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Targon's Peak Ramp. We are going to be going crazy with this deck. If you like to just, um, you know, have some variants and maybe do some really, really crazy stuff, that's what we're going to have here. We're going to have Targon's Peak be a landmark that cost five, reduce the cost of a random card in each player's hand to zero this round. Well, as you can see, we have basically half of our deck, more than half of our deck, really cost seven plus mana. Um, so, it, you know, just we're going to be making things like one of these cards costs zero every single turn. And, um, <clears throat> you know, just it's going to be insane, basically. So we need to ramp into Targon's Peak. We need Targon's Peak to not die to a landmark removal spell, which these days everybody's playing landmark removal spells. So that's bad for us. But if they don't have it, if it doesn't work out for them, then we start making these things cost zero mana from like Feel the Rush uh, being probably like the best thing. But then, you know, She Who Wanders, Aurelian Soul, all sorts of amazing stuff. The thing that I'm a little bit surprised about with our deck, honestly, is that we don't have Skies Descend, to be honest. Um, I, I kind of feel like Skies Descend may be a little better than like She Who Wanders or Infinite Mind Splitter. Um, yeah, like honestly, if I was playing this, like if that stairs, I think you want to play this card. But I'm not sure about three She Who Wanders. I think that you just probably want to just deal 15 damage to your enemies. But anyway, uh, we're gonna we're gonna try this out. It's it's gonna be glorious. We're either going to lose terribly or win spectacularly, and it will be pretty awesome. So let's ramp into Targon's Peak and then start casting all this stuff for free. Okay, that's our deck. <laughs> We're heading on over to the arcade. Yeah, no close games. No no close games allowed. We'll either dominate or get destroyed. Well, let's mulligan this. So we have Catalyst into... I kind of want to keep Roar. These two are definite mulligans. I kind of want to keep Roar. Um, against the aggro deck, but no, let's just mulligan it. Because we need to just, you know, find the Targon's Peak. Okay, so I'm going to go Weirding Stones on three. <clears throat> and then on four... This is great for us, by the way, that my opponent hasn't done anything yet. On turn four, we're going to have eight mana, so I can either go Voices of the Old Ones or Catalyst plus Weirding Stones or Divergent Paths draw. No pray, no pay. Guns blazing. Okay. I'm worried about, like right here, I'm worried about the... Um, the two-mana spell that makes the 2-1 challenger. Or like, like, they could have 2-1 challenger kill your we weirding stones. Or they have single combat. If I figure I'm going Spacey Sketcher and Weirding Stones this turn, and then I'll probably need to go Trundle next turn... I guess, like, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm gonna have time to play the voices of the old ones, honestly. Oh, yeah. That's a okay, that Crescent Strike can be good. Can slow them down. The ocean charts our course. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking that the heal from Catalyst could be necessary. Um, even though we may be able to draw extra cards with the voices, I just don't think with the way we have time to do that. For king and country. So we will stun... Wait, no, let's play Trundle first. The They're going to attack with this goot. And then I'll stun. Demacia! I do want to play... Um, <clears throat> this is kind of on my like ideas of, of decks to play. I do really want to play like scouts like this with the new landmark. Forever, why don't you? And you know, like basically because like Island Navigator with the Demacia landmark seems amazing. 
right? Getting like a three, four, a three, five scout challenger, and then another good scout challenger. Oh, you're interesting. Well, they made they made that turn very easy for me. I just take one damage. Their Garen doesn't even strike. Okay, no rally. Now and forever. Come on, make it hit that stair zero. Yes. So I can play you know, Ice Pillar, hit that stairs, hit that stairs. Didn't go well. This didn't go well. <laughs> Still heal my Nexus for three. I'm um, studying the misfortune because it's the four four overwhelm. The Garen I can just throw the weirding stones in front of, but the misfortune has overwhelm. Let's go the other way. Let's get rid of the scout. I basically want to give them the opportunity to play more things for me to kill this at that stairs. Slow down, will you? Yeah, like that. So next turn we're gonna have a 50-50 shot whether we're giving field a rush. Or, you know, making Field of Rush cost zero, or Catalyst of Aeons cost zero. Yeah, I, did, I didn't attack to get the attack with this thing. I mean, all I would be doing is, you know, challenging the Scythria that would die also. I kind of wanted the attack with these after those things died. Yeah, Pawn, I mean, I play I play everything, you know, and, and this was a donation deck that we had. Um, and so we're, we're playing it. You're covered. All right, well, now attacking doesn't make a lot of sense, allowing them to strike with their Garen. Zero mana field of rush. All right, revi revitalizing roar could be good if we ever draw a Best unit. Place. Too bad I just played all sorts of units. 
So I hope that's not like double repost. Or re repost plus sharp sight. Go down to one. And I have the catalyst to heal three. I'm go to four. Hopefully it's misfortunes make it rain. So they have some kind of fast speed spell. I'm thinking it's... Oh, Garen's Judgment. Oh. Ew. Ew. Well. For the I have to have a unit in hand for Revitalizing Roar. I do not currently have a unit in hand. A Rillian Soul being summoned from Field of Rush doesn't... Yeah, we don't get to do that. We don't get to do the play invoke thing. I mean, I have an ice pillar. I could, we could draw, we could gain zero. A beginner's guide to creation. You're in troll labs now. One troll to rule them all. Might as well just do this. I mean, I can't. I mean, how am I supposed to kill Misfortune? What? What do you want me to do to kill Misfortune? Dead. I can't. I can't pull Misfortune. Misfortune doesn't have vulnerable. I don't have any challengers. Honestly, who loses with a space dragon on their side? Same matchup. Um, let's hope they don't have like judgment again. Judgment was, was pretty rough. I mean, so, all right, so this is turn three, Weirding Stones, turn four, Voices of the Old Ones, turn five, we're not going to be, like, casting Field of Rush or anything yet. But that could be something that we're going to need. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what this Field of Rush. I guess we just keep it. Alright, well, there's Peak. Alright, so they're gonna be killing my Weirding Stones. Um, I can either double ramp with this. Next turn we have six mana, but then we're just like just playing Targon's Peak anyway. I think we just simply play Peak. No prey. No prey. And this fortune card is good. Time for and let's hope we hit Field of Rush. One out of six chance. 
And nope, we hit voices. So I'm going to be playing, I'll play Trundle, and we'll play voices. We'll destroy that. I could also just go Spacey Sketcher and Weirding Stones and get like more cards out of my hand, which could be better for the peak. That's actually probably better. I don't know if like making feel the rush costs one less is that important, but yes, yeah, so that this makes it so it's a lot better chance that we hit feel the rush. That's too bad. Love ya. King of Trolls coming through! Sugar in your boots! One Get to play Trundle and level up Trundle, same turn. And yeah, let's get a second peek. Everything costs zero. Wait, they both hit Feel the Rush? They hit the same thing? I guess I guess that can happen. I guess that can happen. Huh. The trolls are showing the war. Are you you and me will rule the world. And I thought humans were stupid. What do they have in hand? They're just not doing anything. I'm gonna I'm gonna gain ten life with this. I'll be damned. We're not gonna make she who wanders cost zero right now, but oh well. Virtue guides me. And I'm not gonna just play the ice pillar and have it get obliterated. Yeah, this is the greediest deck of all time. <laughs> Who wants to fight? No, I mean, I think I think this deck needs all of the ramp to go along with Targon's Peak. I think it needs it because the curve is so high. All right, we're back at 15, so we are looking very good. Now we'll get our Celestial cards with Aurelian Soul. And we made Ice Pillar cost double zero. Slow down, will you? Oh, right. She Who Wanders is in hands also, so it doesn't matter that this costs zero here. Like, that I wasn't playing it. I was just thinking about in play. But right, it's in hands also. So I was going to play that, then I was going to play the zero mana thing and gain eight mana, that is. But we should be just fine.
<laughs> Double trouble. Yeah, I would say that she who wanders in Aurelian Soul would classify as double trouble. Alright, one and one. Against the scouts. You've been wonderful, as have I. All right, going to start the prediction here with two minutes. Y'all let me know if, it, if two minutes is too much time. All right, we keep ramp, we keep ramp. What are they playing? Oh, they're playing burn. So I need ramp, ramp, hit that stairs. I need that. Um, I'm not sure about their Aurelian Soul, but, you know, this is turn three, turn four, turn five. Maybe I just simply keep a Aurelian Soul, maybe not. Wow, did nothing turn one, turn two? That is pretty great. Please don't kill my Weirding Stones. Unfortunate. That obviously means Ravenous Flock. Unfortunate. Just pass. Don't do it. Boo. Because that means they get to, like, time walk us again for this turn four. Um, I could play Revitalizing Roar and gain ten. But then, if I do that, then turn five, I don't have anything to do. Okay, let's say I don't play anything, and then I just play Voices of the Old One. So, like, don't do anything this turn. Next turn, Voices. The turn after, we would have eight mana. And so, like, the turn after, they go to open attacks. I'm going to, like, have to play Star Shaving to stay alive, probably. And that doesn't seem great. Yeah, so I don't think I could just save up for voices next turn so let's go let's just go star shaping here and just have the two mana um i don't know i guess you so hopefully we draw something we can play here no nope. do you think i'm looking good how do you come to that conclusion? I guess just because I have two gain tens in hand with revitalizing roars, even though I may not be doing anything except for just gain ten after attacks. Yeah, that and that definitely helped. They didn't play anything else to deal damage to me with. Um, that definitely helped. They didn't do anything. You know, didn't play any other units there. Now I'm casting Revitalizing Roar. So I could have cast Revitalizing Roar this turn and it would have healed my Nexus for 9. By waiting a turn, it heals my Nexus for 10. I guess I could play Hit That Stairs. Man, this is... This is risky. But obviously, it just helps so much if we have enlightened with the revitalizing roars. It just helps so much. I can't. I can't pass. If I pass. They. I have ten cards in hand, and I have nothing in play. If I pass, they. There is no reason for them to play anything. They would just go to attacks. Hmm. Oh, I don't know why I didn't attack for eight there. I should have. Because they should be using, like, Guillotine or Scorched Earth or something like that. Come on, two three-power things? Both two drops got three-power. Seriously?
there are not that many three damage, two power. I mean, there's a decent amount, but I guess there are a lot of like three twos. Yeah, I sure hope this works too. I'm right there with you, Boom Crew Rookie. I'm sure hope sure hope this works. Scouts again, man, how just playing against the matchup three times? We're not really getting a good look into the metagame when we're playing against the same deck all the time. So we're going to Catalyst of Aeons on 3. I don't know if we have time for like Catalyst of Aeons on 3, Catalyst of Aeons on 4. Maybe not. Come on, Targon's Peak. No Targon's Peak. What are we getting rid of? Mind Splitter? All right, so throwing the spaces catcher out in front of this thing. I don't. I just. I discarded the weirding stones because I didn't want to rely on the weirding stone staying alive. Plus, my plan right now, of course, is to um, play Trundle the next turn, and then I. So I didn't really want to have. You know, when to find some other more, more powerful things instead of just the weirding stones right there. Yeah, I mean, I think that's awesome. That's pretty awesome. If they have sharp sight too. These are trolls. Yeah, that's why I like. I, I love that. Yeah, like that. That island navigator ground plaza is awesome. Oh, you're interesting. I spilled. Bless is motion. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna say. So basically, do you have sharp sight or not? I guess I should have kept Weirding Stones. We could double Weirding Stones this turn. But we get to save three spell mana. Fortune favors the bow. The ocean is no place for the weak. Wow, no single combat? Oh yeah, we have faces of the old ones in this deck. Soldiers to me! I'm gonna make a you sickle! <laughs> King. Oh no, I'm sorry, Mr. Tosley. Always forward. Nothing's tougher than a troll. Love ya. I would not be surprised if they use Cythria to, um, you know, they can have Cythria challenge my infinite mind splitter and kill it and trade, but I'm, you know, I'm all for that trade right now. It's attack number two.
Cool. We're not quite dead. Not quite dead is good. Next turn, we're gonna have like the 10 mana, so we're gonna be able to have Revitalizing Roar. No, they took the Aurelian Soul from my hand. Never mind, I was gonna say Revitalizing Roar, the Aurelian Soul. But they took the one from my hand. Down to three. Feel pretty good about this game. Justice will be served. Yeah, feel pretty good about this one. Now they'll pay attention. There we go. The wood can't fight back. Jenny. They are going to kind of kill my Aurelian Soul. Ooh. Hopefully this gets rid of a bunch of stuff in their hand. Doesn't get rid of anything in play. Only one card. But I got three good blockers for their three things. We're at 19 still. Um, that does kill Aurelian Soul, of course. We have to try to kill Misfortune. Through Relentless Pursuit and stuff like that. No mercy. All right, easy block right there. I'm not, I don't want to have my Aurelian Soul Tussle. We'll take eight damage. If they want to play Relentless Pursuit afterwards, that's fine, because then I can have Aurelian Soul block. We're not blocking right now. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't challenge the Aurelian Soul, to be honest. But I guess they were more worried about Trundle. game. That did not go according to plan for my opponent. Yeah, they should have should have uh, challenged there. Time, Which we got paired after two seconds. Uh, let's see. Okay. So we're playing against the you know deck, this Garen Aurelian Soul deck with the landmark. Uh, I want to mulligan those for sure. I'll keep Feel the Rush Catalyst. And uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna keep. We're gonna keep Feel the Rush Catalyst. Okay, I like the Targon's Peak, but. They're going to be a pretty decent Targon's Peak deck also. You know, like, they're playing Aurelian Soul. They're playing expensive cards. Targon's Peak is both players. So we may get unlucky where we have our opponent be able to cast something pretty sweet for uh, not much mana. All right. Catalyst is the safe card. Weirding Stones. They're not going to be able to kill Weirding Stones, are they? I don't think so. Wish I would have had that card a turn earlier. Alright, come on, feel the rush. Yeah. 
Let's go. Feel the rush on turn six. <laughs> We're so good at this game. So much talent, so much skill. Turn six, feel the rush. To be fair, they had the zero mana Eclipse Dragon. They got them two other good cards. So they're also very good at this game. I ah, voices. Love an audience. My heart and sword. For the Mafia! Searching light! Can you take him 15? Cool. I'll take zero. We haven't heard, good question. Question was, do you, do you know if Rune Terra ever plans to phase out old cards like Hearthstone does? Um, same with Magic, same kind of thing. Uh, or will the, all cards always be playable? Um, I don't think that the last thing is realistic. I don't think you can realistically play a game where all cards are always playable, um, especially when you're whenever the game is years and years old. That's just not really possible. So I abs so I completely expect there to be, you know, fa you know, as I said, like phasing out cards or rotating out cards, however you want to uh, say that. But as far as their plans go, they have not announced it. That was something that um, last year in June or so, whenever the Bilgewater expansion released, they kind of hinted towards uh, maybe like in February, whenever the next, like that next. Um, set came out that maybe they'd kind of tell us something during that time period so while um i don't actually i don't even know if this is this field of rush is really best card to play I'm busy talking about other stuff. So yeah, I, I think I should have gone the She Who Wanders. It would have obliterated like those three things, especially the Screeching Dragons, um, which would have been important. The cosmos will go to the stars. Yeah, I should have gone with the She Who Wanders. At my creations. So yeah, like there there will be like rotation eventually, but it's not it's not something that's gonna happen, you know, right away. But that, that will be something that you can expect to eventually. Now they'll pay attention. What am I cost zero? This thing? I don't have an easy way to get rid of this. Alright, so yeah, like that that field of, you know, like that was a lesson learned with that field of rush. Shouldn't have played it into the Aurelian Soul Champion spell. That was my bad.
Sorry, I was kind of talking and not, not really thinking too much. Must make that star sound. And level up Aurelian Soul. Get it done. I only have one thing they can block. They just scout, attack, kill that, and then attack, kill me. Alright, well, I probably should not have lost that. Um, if I didn't play into their Skies of, of the Skies Descend. But I did. Yeah, it backfired real hard. I, I should have played the She Who Wanders. That would have been really important. It still would have been difficult, right? Like, Skies Ascend is still amazing. I don't know if, I don't know if, like, the Skies Ascend cost zero from, I didn't, I wasn't really paying that close attention. I don't know if this, if that, they just, because I think they played a really Soul and Skies Ascend the same turn, right? So I, I think that was a zero mana Skies Ascend. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if, like, She Who Wanders obliterating those dragons would have made, would have kept them from playing it. I'm not sure. But, you know, like, that's, it, it can be, you know, you can do some really crazy stuff. But like I, you know, I actually, like I said at the very beginning of the game, I think that this deck should be playing Skies Ascend. I really do. And we kind of saw there that that last turn kind of why, right? Like we, or that last game, you know, like we lost the Skies Ascend. Um, I would I would definitely play that over some number of She Who Wanders and Infinite Mind Splitter. I think that these cards are okay, but I just don't think you need that many of them now the thing is is those cards are you know they those cards do make your uh your revitalizing roar better so that's a thing i would i would play at, at the very least i'm playing one right like i'm playing one at the very least because it's just how powerful this effect is uh, i'm playing one if i'm playing this deck i'm playing one at the very least you know you can you can think about adding more in besides that all right, but there we go. There's Targon's Peak Ramp. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Kitty Dexterity. Thank you for the cheers. I appreciate that. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button and leave those comments. Let me know what you think of this deck. You know, going all in like this on the Targon's Peak. Um, you know, if, and if you've been playing this kind of deck, let me know how, how has this been going for you. We didn't get to see a ton of different matchups played against the same deck three times, unfortunately, but that's what happens whenever you play games. Um, you know, sometimes you just, you know, like your matches can kind of get clumped like that, like where you play against the same kind of deck a lot in a short period of time. Um, but it was fun to play. It was fun to play, and we got to do some crazy stuff. So yeah, y'all on YouTube, leave those comments, hit that like button, and I would really appreciate that. But uh, I also really appreciate y'all for watching. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you for the next video.